It is five o'clock. What does that mean? That means Barsha, 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 episode 39 with makeup artists to the stars, uh, Greg Brockington. Greg, please come on camera. Woo! <laughs> Greg, I have to tell you what I do. I do a song for all my guests. Are you ready for my song? I am. I am. All right, here we go. Where do you go on Mondays when you want to have fun? Well, where can you go on Mondays when your day is done? Well, Fireside Chat is where it's at. Our guests are all the best. If you need a beauty expert, he's number one. So let's all have some rockin' fun with Greg Brockington. Help me in welcoming Greg Brockington. Ah, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Why aren't people clapping? React, everybody. It's down there. You can do clapping, clapping, clapping. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Now, that's what I call clapping and reacting. Yes. Now, that's it. That is it. Now, we got a proper welcome for you, Greg. First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me give you the real welcome, which is he is a self taught makeup artist okay he went to parsons we're going to be talking about it and then you know you went through some design stuff and then you had this turnaround where you started being a makeup artist self-taught we're going to start there because that's <laughs> insane you go from self-talk to having naomi campbell beyonce diana ross annie mcdowell katie holmes come on i mean how did this happen Take me right to the Parsons School. T take me to what you were majoring in and let's go. Well, thank you for having me, Deborah. I'm really happy to be here. It's nice to see you, not on a Sunday. That's right. Um, that's right. I am self-taught, um, which in a way doesn't mean that I didn't train in some way. I, w I did go to art school. I went to Parsons. I was a fashion design major. I was a color theory minor. Um, I... Color Can theory minor. Yeah, it's weird. Um, it was one of those things. It was like, do you want color theory? I was like, sure, why not? So, but it did help me get one of my first fun jobs while I was in college because I went to school at night. So I studied, uh, I went, to, I worked during the day and studied at night. And that major, that minor actually helped me get a job for a company that did hand painted silk fabrics for 7th Avenue. So we did 10 yard runs of hand batiked silk fabric for Ralph Lauren, uh, uh, Mary McFadden, Halston. We did all these designers and I was the colorist. So I was hired to mix color so that when they re went to reproduce this, the colors that would always match if there were any new lots to be made. So wow. my color theory minor made minor at school helped me get that job that is and then so I, I did that for a while and i designed tabletop and i sold interior fabrics i mean i did a few things before i officially became a makeup artist i was doing makeup for my friends to go out because we were you know we were, we were my generation's equivalent of club kids and so it kind of morphed into um a friend that was a makeup artist professionally, the only one that I knew, saying, you know, you should try it. You could travel to the world and people will pay you yes. and meet amazing people. And I was like, I'm in. Okay, look, here's the thing. You know, you say, you make it sound so easy. I'm in. Then what happens? Like, you, your first jobs were in Italy. Am I crazy? No, I, um, I started doing what's called testing here. So I do uh, photos of new models with a photographer oh. for the models book. I got to build my own portfolio that way as well. Got it. Um, and then I decided that um, I was in a relationship here that wasn't working. I wanted to start this new career. I wanted a new experience. I right. didn't want to be the person that um, 
because I was born in New York City. Right. And we can be really spoiled in New York City because we get so much here. Yeah. I didn't want to be the person to grow old and think that I'd seen the world from my living room. Wow. So I had a, a second cousin, my mother's first cousin, who was an actually he was an engineer, but he went to Paris and stayed for a few years to be a painter. I knew about that. I have one of his paintings. I'm looking at his painting right now. And my father, when he was in uh, World War II, was stationed in France, and he had this connection to France. So I always knew that I would travel to Europe. Right. I had a feeling that I would live there at least a bit. And initially, I thought I was going to be in Paris, because that was where my, my relatives had been. But I met one person through correspondence that was a makeup artist in Milan, um, Paula Owen, also a Buddhist, which I'm a Buddhist, for those who don't know. Yes, we will be talking about our connection with Buddhism. Uh, yes, we will. And I got to Milan after being my first week abroad was in Paris. I spent all my money. I got screamed at by the Parisians. It was an awful experience. <laughs> and I got on a night train with like six other guys in a compartment, which was already a, a, a culture shock because I was raised an only child. And I got to Milan, got to my hotel. I called this person who I only met through correspondence and said, I'm hi, I'm here. And I was in her apartment the first night in Milan. I met her boyfriend who became her husband. I'm godfather for two children. She was She was like a fairy godmother for me. I love it. And that's that's the beginning of it, right? Yeah. I mean, those yeah. are... Okay, look, I have to tell you that my themes for my show are LGBTQ. It's called On a Queer Day, one of my shows, as you know. Yeah. And the other one is the Broadway Buddhist, but you feel both. Yeah. You are both LGBTQ <laughs> and you're a Buddhist. And I want to ask you, are you saying that your Buddhist practice came before this whole thing happened or during? Oh, before. Oh, I started so you practicing were... um, in 1983, and I left the country in 1987. Whoa! So this is something you were probably chanting for. I yeah. was. I was chanting for that trip. It was supposed to be three months. Right. It turned into eight years. Holy shit! I learned a second language, mind you. I'd studied French in school badly, but at least I'd studied French in school. Yes. Parisians didn't want anything to do with it. They weren't having any of it. Okay, so. can I just talk about your own makeup today that you have on? Can wow. we just hear a little reactions for Greg's makeup? Thank you. Hello. Hopefully, okay. if, I, hopefully if I'm lucky, no one even knew it was there. But it's there. Now, that's what I wanted to ask you about. And I'm going to show. Listen, uh, you see this little fortune cookie that's scrolling across the stage? I am going to put in Greg's in Instagram page because you need to go look at his Instagram. What I was going to ask you about specifically with makeup, and this I'm, I'm probably late to the party. I don't really know a lot about this, but one thing you said blew me away, which is the, you're so into the preparation of the face more many in ways than the makeup. And Absolutely. then you have this incredible video where you're standing behind the woman and you're really prepping it like a blank canvas or something. Yeah. What is that theory that you have as I'm putting your Instagram in the thing? Go ahead. I wish, Deborah, I could say I invented this whole situation, but I didn't. Okay. I, um, I've been really fortunate in uh, having various cosmetic contracts. Um, and one of the contracts that I had was with Shiseido. Oh, uh, super high-end luxury Japanese brand. Yes. And one of the first things, and this was 15, 16, 17 years ago, one of the major things they did when we went in, the, I was part of a global team, part, and I got this job because of a friend that I was assisting, a makeup artist named Tom Peshaw from Paris. Right. And he made sure all of his first assistants got a contract, which I thought was extremely generous and extremely Very. kind. Um, and one of the things that they did when you went into your meeting at Shiseido was they taught you their technique of skin prep. And it was intensive. 
I mean, the 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 massage and the the. the that, that, that's what I said. I, no one has ever given put makeup on me with a massage and the whole oh. things under the eyes. I'm telling you, everyone loves it. I, and the thing is, I am almost the very first person a model or an actress sees in the morning. So. And it's like early a lot of the time, right? Early. What I'm doing is I'm helping wake up them, but I'm also helping to wake up and prepare the skin. I'm getting blood flow. I'm getting the skin to plump up. I'm prepping it with products so it, everything I put on it afterwards glides. I mean, once you know the theory, it just makes perfect sense. And I've done it ever since. Even if I, what I did on myself today was with skincare prior. I see this. Unbelievable. You know, you, as you say that, I'm thinking to myself, do you, it, it, like when they call you, and I know you're represented and everything, obviously, do you put that into your time that's going to be spent with the person you're, do you like leave extra time for the prep? It like, is part of what I do. It's, it's embedded in what I do. I think I've said in a video somewhere prior, time. I would go a lot longer. Wow. If I could have an hour and a half for skin prep, I would. Can you imagine? There's never that amount of First time. First of all, I'm interviewing you. I'm having sh I have shit makeup on. I don't even have, I don't know what I have on. It's it's ridiculous. So it's it's very funny to be interviewing like makeup artists of the stars and I have nothing on. <laughs> I never, listen, my grandmother told me something. Tell me if, if you agree with this and please Set me right if I'm wrong. I'm 63, and I've never washed my face with soap. Thank you. <gasps> yes! Okay, my grandma said... I have to say, I'm not, I'm not as fortunate with, as you are because I didn't learn that until later in life. Um, but I had an old aunt, my Aunt Florence, who passed away in 2009 at 93, 4, 5, somewhere in there. And first of all, I have to say I'm, I'm really fortunate because I come from a gene pool where we have relatively good skin, considering. Your skin is gorgeous. I know people that don't have that gene, and I, I realize that I have a certain amount of good fortune in that sense. Right. But what my aunt did tell me was she wore a full face of makeup every day that I knew her. Right. I never saw her real hair except once because she always wore a wig, beautiful wigs. And she had a full head of gorgeous hair, but she saved that hair. She wasn't going to have it fried out or dyed out. She protected her hair more that. So it was my first uh, uh, introduction to protective hairstyles for black women. But she also says she cleans her makeup every night with Pond's cold cream. That's what she used. And she would use it to take off her makeup. She would rinse her face with ice cold water. And then she would put a layer of that on before she went to bed. And I learned that in 2009. And I've never put soap on my face since that moment. I, you don't know what this means to me. You have no, I, I tell people, they go, you never wash your face with soap? I said, no. My grandma Daisy, look at my face. I, 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 of course, but well, that's you don't. Different. It's not, I wouldn't use like a bar of soap on my face ever. That's what I'm saying. But I've seen people do it. They lather it up and everything. I'm and like, I what are you to. Right. I used to See, shave with, with soap. Now I'm, I'm getting totally validated. I feel amazing. Now <laughs> I want to <laughs> ask you a, a little bit of a deep question. Seriously. And I'm serious about this because I want to know your definition of beauty. You know, so many people have called you a beauty expert and what is beauty to you? It's whatever the person has innately in them. My job is not to make a woman better necessarily. My job is to make her feel good in her skin or a man oh. feel good in his skin. So I'm only there to uh, help hopefully cancel out any imperfections, uh, bring forward whatever things that are already there. Right. But I, my, my style has never been masking a face. Now, let me just say for the record, I've done some super extreme beauty situations. But generally, I think my goal is to make the person look like the best version of themselves. I know. In when a I general look at sense. 
if I'm if doing anybody, something that's themed, obviously that's different. But generally, the, the best of themselves should come through. I I have to tell you, please click on Greg's. Uh, wait, is this link working? Please, because I don't know if it's working. I think I screwed up and I didn't put the word beauty next to Brockington, so I just oh, fixed it. Beauty, it won't go. Up, it won't go through. I just fixed it. Let's see if it's working now. I want to ask you something. You just gave me an idea when you were talking about. I have seen your makeup style. I know sometimes people ask you, do you ever get one of these famous people saying to you, listen, I want you to be my own private makeup guy. Do they ever say that to you? I mean, I've, I've worked with people for periods of time. Um, okay. I've never, well, do I've they never request- been so exclusive. I've been, you know, X, Y, or Z's personal makeup artist for any real length of time. And However, I know you don't want that. that. I've been really wanting to go on tour with someone. Oh, <gasps> really? I've, I've never done it. And I think I want to do that now. And it's totally selfish because I want to fly private. Because <laughs> you want to fly private. I love it. <laughs> listen, listen, Greg. I, I, I want <laughs> It's so great. And can we please talk about the shirt you're wearing? I'm sorry. Oh my God, please. Let's talk about this. Please talk about the shirt you're wearing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This shirt is by a young man named Sean, S-E-A-N, Johnstone. Okay. He has been creating these these sort of black iconic shirts. I have four of them. He's been sending them to me and I'm so happy to have them. I wanted to wear this today because I... I never was a hip hop guy. <laughs> now at almost sixty three, next two oh weeks my God, from now, we're the same age. I can't believe it. Go ahead. On January 29th, I turned sixty three. I thought, let me embrace my inner, my inner hip hop guy. Yo, yo, what's up? <laughs> 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 so that's good. Oh, so that's this shirt. He did one of uh, an image of like a fifties version of Sammy Davis Jr. A beautiful version of like Tina Turner in concert, one with like the beautiful, the boss, Diana Ross face. And there's another one coming, I believe, that has like the iconic James Brown. So please go to his page on Instagram, Sean Johnstone, and put some love on this young man because he's doing a great job. I love that you just promoted someone. Thank you. That is so amazing. That brings the Buddhist practice Funny, into I'll mind. promote water if it's worth it. <laughs> you know, we both know each other through our Buddhist practice. Yes. And do you, do you credit your practice with like kind of your purpose, like your purpose in your life? Like I read the an article about you. Through every single day of what I do. I want to tell you, I read this quote that you said, and it kind of inspired my practice. You said, my Buddhist practice of chanting has taught me indestructible happiness in all aspects of my life, no matter what I'm going through. And my purpose is to be happy and bring that into every environment. The thing about it is, how do you define happiness? You know, that's such a overused word. What do you mean by that? You know, it's such an amorphous word. Everyone has yeah. their own version of it. People, me included, generally tend to think happy is like happy, exactly. which it can be as well. And it sh- and it, that that's valid and true as well. But I remember when I first started to practice and I was learning about myself in this practice, one of the things I got um, told as a young man in a Buddhist practice was, we do this to build indestructible happiness, which was a term I'd never heard of before. Yeah. And what I came to understand with that term is there is happiness in every, there can be happiness in every situation. And I'll give you an example. When I first got to Italy, I was living in an apartment with a, a, a then boyfriend and we had some other friends that were also Buddhist. I, obviously, I was a Buddhist when I was living in Italy. Right. And one of the guys was a couple, a gay couple, um, Tim and Pietro. Tim was American, Pietro was Italian. Mm-hmm. And they were both having really hard uh, health issues at the time. It was the height of the AIDS epidemic. And they were being battered, these two, these two men. And so I had them come to my apartment often in the mornings and we would chant together. 
And I was going through my own stuff with like not working and make, not making money and being scared about my career. But I knew that my practice would always guide me through yeah. my, my ups and my downs. There's a quote that I just heard from a young man as an actor, uh, Jeremy Pope. Yes. Said that someone, an, uh, his therapist gave him this, this, this advice, which was, he said, you know, I always feel like my life is like lots of ups and downs and lots of up and downs. And I just rather it would be just like normal. And she said, well, if you look at your life like a cardiogram, it's always moving up. When it goes like that, you're flatlining. So you're dead. <laughs> right. And it blew, I just heard this three days ago, it blew my mind. But going back to Pietro and Tim, no matter what was going on in my life, I was always thinking about the best possible outcomes. And I've always been an optimist. And so I would greet these guys at the door and I'd be like, good morning, how are you? Let's do this. And, and Tim said to me one day, like, how do you do it? How are you always so cheerful? And I said, that's why we practice. Yeah. To, 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 to see some sort of joy in whatever adversities we come across. And I so. know you've had some hard working situations. And the other concept of Buddhism is that we take responsibility for all of it in our environment. Yes. Not half you, of it. We don't, I ask don't people. always want to. Right. But I've learned to. Yeah. And some of those stories have really inspired me. Now, in all of these um in all of these situations you keep saying then boyfriend but one of the uh -huh. things one of the things that i find so interesting about you and i will get back to your career in a minute but i happen to know your do you call him your partner or your husband or what all of the above okay depends on who you we're talking have, to i am now going to say something to everyone in this audience get ready Greg Brockington has been with this person for 28 years and they don't live together. <laughs> now, what is it about the successful, incredible partnership that you choose not to live together? I want everyone to hear this because it's worked for you and you're totally still in love. I know the relationship. I see it all the time. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think one of the main things that is that we were both on the same page when we met. Mm. We both both wanted the same thing. We both did not want to live with a partner because we both had just come out of experiences of living with people long term. I had come out of two relationships where I lived with my partner. He had come out of two relationships where he lived with his partner. When I met him, I was 35 and I never really lived alone. Wow. And I needed to know me. I needed to know let me find out how I fuck up. Yeah. He needed to find the same and figure out himself too. And so we were both on the same page with that. The second thing is we, we have an enormously deep and profound respect for one another. That's the key. That's why I'm with Kim so long. One it's of the, the things respect. we said at the very beginning is that we have absolutely no jurisdiction on each other. So if you want to go out with your friends, have fun. I, I, it's not my place to say, where are you going? Oh, I would never. Doesn't yes. mean we don't talk about it. He knows exactly where, I, where I've gone. I know exactly where you've, but there's no, none of that sort of like, I didn't want to emulate a, a, a heteronormal sort of idea of a relationship. There so I go. didn't have any idea about getting married. That was the farthest thing from my mind. I didn't want to have kids. I never wanted to have kids. So it wasn't even an issue, but you know, all those things that we keep getting, uh, pushed at us when we first started dating the first year everyone was saying oh that's your boyfriend and I was like well he's not my boyfriend he's a guy that I'm dating and when he's my boyfriend I'll tell you he's my boyfriend so I we didn't like people telling us what our relationship was supposed to be and we've been together it will be 28 years together I'll, actually it will be 29 years together this coming August and we've always lived in separate apartments. During the pandemic, we spent two years together living together and we loved it. But we have an enormous respect and an enormous idea of giving each other space. If I say I need yes. to get out of here and get my head clear, there's no judgment. Yeah, that's I mean, I this is you. it. It means I just need some space to clear my head. 
And your husband, or whatever you want to call him, because I love him, is a Jew. He is a Jew boo like me. <laughs> we were born Jewish, and we practice Buddhism. Um, he's a Jew boo, and he's think, my boo. But do you think that if you do have conflict, that the practice helps you, the Buddhist practice, or do you not I'm really sure have? I'm sure it does, but we had this relationship before Adam was actually a Buddhist. So wow, okay. I think it was it's who we are as people. Yes, and I see that. Our, now that we're both practicing Buddhists, I'm sure it it informs that. But right. it's who we were as people. I mean, maybe okay. it, maybe it informed my practice because I was already practicing when I met him, but he was not. So okay, here's what I want to highlight in your life too that I really respect. You do enormous amounts of charity stuff. Can you tell us some of the charity uh, work that you do? Because I, I, I saw the list. Um, there's your bio. There's been a lot. I think one of the things I am, have been the most proud of yes. is there, was, um, there were two organizations. One mm-hmm. was um, a model that I worked with years ago, uh, an Ethiopian woman, Anna Katana, started a, a charity to help educate Ethiopian children. So it was the Ethiopian Children's Fund. I love and it. I volunteered as much as I could for that because I thought it was really a noble cause. The other one was an organization that was um, headed by Malak Compton, who is Chris Rock's ex-wife. Yes. And it was Dress for Success. And what it did was it took women that were totally disadvantaged either they'd been in relationships but they'd been abused or they have been drug users or they would just whatever adversities they had come to and couldn't get past it right. trained these women so they could get into the workforce that organization dressed them hence the name dress dress for success and i went in to teach them how to do makeup for an office situation and it was fantastic it's so rewarding, right? I mean, they were just, just so appreciative, and I would leave with a full heart every single time. Greg, come on, that's amazing, really, seriously. I mean, here you are, you know, doing makeup to the stars, and then you're giving back in this incredible way. Well, let me say this about that: doing makeup for the stars, which, although I love, I love what I do. I love doing makeup. I love working with people, and I love working with different people. Being a makeup artist, working with celebrity is not always great. Celebrities are spoiled bitches. <laughs> Go ahead. I had, to, I had to laugh. Go ahead. Said it. And, you know, although when you read it in the press, it sounds great. It's not always a, they're not always great people. Now I have worked with some people who have been amazing. Andy McDowell is amazing. Diana Ross has been amazing. So, you know, there are those people in all that that are just fantastic. But, you know. Yes, I hear you. I hear you. You work in theater. You know what I mean. I know what you mean. But, you know, you know, I, I, I notice little things when I'm watching some of your videos on YouTube and everything. And just the care that you, even though that person might be whatever, once you turn your artist mind on, I see it. I see it turn on. And you're looking at the face and you're seeing all, I see it. And the fact, this is a small detail, but my makeup artist, and I'm, I have no makeup artist, but whenever I've done a shoot, they're always standing in front of me. You stand behind for a good long time. To do that massage, yes. To do that thing. And I thought, oh my God, that's not just physical. That's like a spiritual thing that you do. You, It's kind of like you're getting the person centered spiritually before the makeup. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I really take it seriously. I think my, my job, especially as, as the first person to be in contact with the talent every day. Right. It's my responsibility to set a tone. Yes. I take it really seriously. I know like I don't you. like a lot of loud music playing. I prefer something that's you can play the platform when we're shooting, play whatever you want. But in that moment, it needs to be as zen, for lack of a better term, as possible. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? You've talked about – keep going, keep going. That, I have to remember what I'm, I'm going to ask no, you. No, I'm ahead. not going to fix that spoiled bitches comment, my sweetie. <laughs> 
<laughs> you you have also talked about how important you have favorite photographers and lighting people, and and you've talked about how important that is. Do you think that at, is it like a teamwork where the photographer goes, you know what he wants to get the shot, or do you completely create out of your own style? No, I'm. I that's one of the misconceptions I think for a lot of people, what right. I do is always a collaborative effort. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm going, unless the, 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 the shoot is about a specific concept that I have that I want to put in print. Otherwise I'm there to work as part of a team and we're coming up with a concept together. The hairdresser has his idea. The photographer has his idea with light. We know who the model is. Uh, I get an idea of what I want to do depending on the story about makeup and it's a collaborative effort, um, and yes. I like collaborating. I love it. I love it. Um, so, okay, let's talk about all these um, fashion covers. So you had Vogue, Italian Vogue first, right? Yes. And that must have been like a dream come true for you. What was that like? <laughs> yeah. I had just gotten to Italy. I Every makeup artist or hairstyles or photographer's dream in fashion is to get a Vogue cover. So exactly. of course I had that same dream and I got to Italy and I was, you know, it was before cell phones and before computers and you had to sort of go someplace or call someplace to make an appointment to see whatever editor was in charge of whatever. Yes. And I was in Milan and it, anyone that knows how Italy works, it doesn't always work with a phone call. You know, people put you off and they're like, oh, she's too busy. And no, oh, she's not here. And I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> and part of part of that moxie is uh, I don't care. I'll just go in and do it. And so I would go to this office at uh, the Vogue offices and I would go, you know, a few times a week. And I try to go see this person and show my book. And they kept putting me off and kept putting me off. And I finally just decided, you know what? I'm waiting. Oh my God, you did one of those things hours. where I'll wait? I sat there for hours and I refused to leave and I just sat there. And when they put me off, I was like, okay, I came back the next day and I waited. Still, I waited because I was like, I know she's here. I can see her through the door. I know she's here. <laughs> oh my so, God, you waited. So you did this two days in a row? I, more than two days. Okay, and does everybody hear this? Like, finally, she was like, just let him come in. Right. So I went in and she looked at my book and she did one of those things. It was like, Froop! thank you very much. And I was like, okay, well, I, I did what I wanted to do. I got to see that head editor for that thing. And three, four weeks later, I got booked for a job and it was for a, one of the Vogue magazines and we were shooting this thing. And I was like, okay. And then like a month or so later it came out and it came out as a cover and I had no idea. And the only thing I regret is that I didn't appreciate it as much in the time as I should have. Cause I was okay. so raw and I was so new and I was so determined that I was just like on to the next thing. Right. But, but that is amazing. You didn't know, maybe you would have been more nervous or something. I don't know if you knew it was a cover who knows? I, I know. I, that it was with is a, a fantastic photographer who I like was a big deal, and I got there, and I was like, "Oh wow, I'm with this guy." Oh my god! Remember, there were there were my call sheet came by a fax. That's how long ago this. Oh was. my god! Oh my god! It's it's unbelievable. It's amazing. I have to ask you about, um, you know, so there you are now. You're in Italy. You have a Vogue cover. So now. What happens from there? And what about these other magazines? How did you get L? How did you get Essence? The Essence one with Diana Ross and was it Tracy? Uh, yes. Ellis? With her daughter, Tracy, yeah. I, I got that, that job because I did a job with Tracy when she was on program Girlfriends. They were right. Essence doing a, 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 a fashion story with, with those ladies as the models. And I wound up meeting Tracy on that job and we got along really well. I did her makeup a few times. And when this cover came up, she decided that I would be a good fit for her mother. I think she thought I was calm and that kind of thing. And I was not nervous when I got the job. I was excited to have the job. Yes. I 
doing this at this point, maybe 10, 12 years, maybe a little bit more. I was really happy to have gotten the job and I was, I did everything I could do. I had every single eyelash in creation because I didn't want there to be like, there was that one eyelash she needed and I didn't have it. Right. So I, I had a table, a, a, a folding dining table, sort of situation that only had eyelashes on it. Oh my God. I'm not going to get caught out on this job because I, of course we've all heard stories of her being really difficult and, and a diva and all these things. And I was like, okay. And I wasn't nervous until I was in the car on my way to the job. And then it started to hit me. And then I was like, Oh, this is, this is a big deal. My parents know her. <laughs> I love it. That's what we always think of our parents. You know? That's Yeah. And I got to the job and we were there. I sat up and you know, when they finally came, I was like, okay, just brace yourself for whatever this is and just do your best. Right. And she was one of the nicest people. Like, That's just nice. And, you know, what I love about that cover, what's so amazing is that it's so minimalist, that makeup. That makeup that was the is. Whole point. The makeup is so minimalist. Everybody go to, I'm going to try to find this on, it's on your Instagram page. I want everybody to see this. It's insanely minimalist. And, and I just, well, everybody go to, go to Greg Brock. And t- By the way, we want to talk about why you have that extra G in your name that I need to know. <laughs> is there a story behind that extra G? There is. Okay. Before I, I go to the extra G, Greg Brockington beauty on Instagram um, is unbelievable. And by the way, check out his weightlifting videos of himself. <laughs> at the gym. But anyway, Greg, it's so gorgeous because it's like they're mother and daughter, but they're not, I know it's the photographer too, but you see the side view of one and you see the front view of the other and you realize, whoa, like you said in the beginning of this interview, hopefully you don't notice that I have makeup on because I'm just accenting things. And that's what that photo evokes for me. Now tell me about the extra G. I got to know. Also, that job, one of the the criteria for that job was to, to have her photographed in a way she hadn't been before. Because we always, at that point, everyone knew Dinah Ross with the long eye and the big hair and the glamour. And this was supposed to be more her with her kid. And it was supposed to be more nurturing and more simple and that. And again, I was nervous because I thought, I don't want to, I don't want to misstep anything. Um, But I will tell a a little uh, addendum to that. I worked with her after that job uh, a few times and one of those jobs, she had done a collaboration with Mac Cosmetics. She did a, uh, one of those uh, Viva Mac things with them. Right. And I was called in to do her makeup for the press tour of it. And so I'm in her hotel room, the Pierre or somewhere, and I'm doing her makeup. And she likes to do her own mascara. People like that, don't they? People are like, and people, some people like to use their own, literally their own mascara wand, which I'm fine with. Right. I'm really fine with that. But... You know, this is Diana Ross. Yeah. Diana Ross is always lashes. And I'm thinking, she's going to do her own mascara. And I said, do you mind if I watch? I love you. And she said, no, baby, come in the bathroom. And I'm sitting on the (laughs) toilet watching Diana Ross put on mascara. I could have died. I love that. It was the best thing ever. And she treated you know, me like, like a child. Like she, she made sure I went out and had lunch and, you know, did you eat? And I was like, oh my God, she's really like a mom. Yeah. That's so beautiful when you have a little bond like that with someone who's like iconic. Yeah. Um, so the G, can we get back to the G? The G I need to know. I, the- in high school, I went to a, a small public high school in New York City called Westside High School in 93rd between West End and Broadway. Mm-hmm. It was a, an alternative kind of high school. We, we sat in circles. We called teachers by their first names. Um, we chose our own classes. We didn't have to do this. We didn't, it was that kind of thing. We smoked in class. This whoa, is the whoa, 70s. Whoa, so. whoa, 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 The 70s. Whoa. 70s. The 70s. Public school. Okay. But I was in class, and there were five Gregories. And we were okay. all, all friendly. And it would be like... Greg, Greg one, Greg two. And I was like, you know what? Let me just put an extra G in this Gregory. <laughs> Let me just, I and love now it. My, 
my passport, all my legal papers have that extra G. <laughs> you know, it, it, look, Barbara took away the A. You added a G. That's yeah. what happened. Yeah. I love it. So now I saw the most recent thing. I don't know how recent it was, but I saw a Parker Posey shoot you did, right? Yes. Yeah. I love Parker Posey. Oh, um, but what the other thing that I want to say is, can I ask a question about race and makeup? Because sure. to me, it's, you know, it's really, yeah, people are clapping. It's really interesting, you know, because I saw one picture of you on Instagram where, like, you had all the colors on your hand. You know how, mm -hmm. um, to me, that's like a painter or some sort that's of an palette, artist. That yeah. Your palette, right. So is there a different way to prepare uh, for a white person and a black person? I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but I'm asking. Prepare, no, the skin, the skin prep is the same. I mean, it... it and each skin prep is tailored to the skin type. I mean, if someone yes. has really dry skin, obviously I'm trying to make it less dry. They have oily skin. I'm trying to take some of the oils down. Is that a stupid prep, question I just asked? No, no, no. The prep is the same. I think what a lot of uh, makeup artists don't do is make sure that they have colors in their kit for everyone. Right. If you, if you're a, uh, a makeup artist and you get to a job and there are uh, four different models with four different, very different skin tones Yes, and you're not prepared. I don't know how professional you are. Right. You have to be Especially prepared. nowadays when there's so many more color options and formulas out, it's almost negligent not to go in and be prepared. And, and I, I, you know, know it, still a lot of black models that have gone to jobs and said, the person that was hired to do their makeup literally last year didn't have the colors for them. And I find that offensive. Yeah. I mean, I hope it wasn't offensive that I only put it in a binary of black and white. That's not, no, no, I, no. Mean. I mean, that's, that's the most sort of, um, yeah, the spectrum, obvious there. Thing. but also I wanted to do it in terms of gender now, because as you showed up as a, as a self-identified male with makeup on, and now we have a lot of people identifying gender wise differently um, you know, I find it very interesting that identity uh, is is coming to the forefront now, and people are choosing. Um, I'm just using a family member. I'm not going to mention who they are, but now that they've transitioned in one way, they're actually uh, <laughs> wearing more makeup than they did before. <laughs> oh. And so, yeah, which is 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 really interesting to me that people are feeling free to what we'd call quote unquote cross dressing, you know, and you know, the thing is, so I think that the, the whole idea of, of um, gendering makeup in itself has shifted. Yes. That's what I'm so trying to get at. And I'm saying it poorly. Most cosme not most, so many cosmetic lines now are doing their advertisements, including men for their mm -hmm. makeup lines. I right. think men are way more um, interested in, in in certain kinds of makeup for themselves. Yes. I, like I have on makeup because I'm on video. I, do I wear makeup in the street normally? No, because it's not necessary. Um, if I wanted to, would I? Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Now, I just want to ask, I want to go back. We're almost done. Anybody who'd like to come up, please, please, you know, just look at the chat. There's a little plus there. You can ask to come up and I will bring you to video. If there's anybody that wants to to come up, you can look at your two little white lines down there and you can ask to come up and ask Greg a question. You don't have to be on video. You can and just why come you up. get my plug. Your plug? <laughs> yeah, oh, because ass. your phone is running out. Okay. Running so out we have 15 battery. minutes left. So really, seriously, if anybody wants to ask a question... Um, that would be great. Uh, I do want to ask you about one thing that I thought about after, um, you were talking a little bit, which is that, you know, you're talking about your husband or your partner and I realized something. He's a gestalt therapist. Yes. <laughs> so like, yes. I was like, cause I remember somebody, I mean, gestalt, that's heavy. I mean, you got to go there. Right. Um, I don't know if that's how he would describe it, but because he's so gentle, I love him so much. Okay, <laughs> um, but anyway, the why I asked that 
is like, here you are, you have very two different careers. You yes. get along fantastic. You don't live together. You both practice the same kind of Buddhism. You're very out. You've always been out. Have you both always been out in your career? Like always? I've been out since I was 14. I love it. And I think Adam, 16, maybe? So, okay, so it was different back then. You and I are the same age. Yes. You're an only child. You come out. I'm not an only. <laughs> he's, Adam's responding to me on on thing. Yes, 16, he came out. He's, um, he's, oh, Adam's watching. Hi, Adam. <laughs> so was it different back then, especially, you know, we're older. So I think it was different. Um, and I was thinking about this earlier. I, I have been really fortunate. Yes. I came out at 14. So that was 1974. Okay. My parents both had, my father's best friend growing up was a gay man. He's actually my godfather. My right. mom's first cousin, who was the painter who went to Paris, was a gay man. They got along splendidly. So both my parents had gay examples before I came out. Wow. Yeah, that's so a New York. it wasn't like I was such a novelty to them. They had people they loved. And so when I came out, I had absolutely no problems at right. all. Right. And I realized my situation, I think maybe Adams as well a bit, we were really fortunate in that we were supported in a lot of ways in our coming out and coming out early and coming out in the 70s. Um, I realized the fortune I have and I realized how difficult it is for, and has been for so many other people. And I, I feel for them. I don't have that experience. So... I find people's uh, pushback to someone coming out as gay is so weird. Look at, we've got a dog. Whose dog is that? And a person, an Audra's. Audra, do you, do you want to be on camera or should we just put you on, on, um, on, uh, do you want to be on video? Audra? Okay, Audra's up here. Uh, she just took herself off. No, she does off. Deanna has an incredible show. Deanna's a fellow firesighter. She has a show called Laughter After Trauma. Deanna, do you have a question for Greg? Uh, let me know. I, I do. Um, I, I didn't know if I was going to come up because, uh, you know, got a lot of stuff going on and my phone's about to die. But um, <laughs> I'm glad you pulled me up because <laughs> I, have a, I have a cousin. And so I, I have this question for you, Greg. Um, he is, he is in, interested in makeup, right? So he does this. He works for, I don't know, a Veda somewhere, a studio. I don't know. Um, how did, how did you break into getting gigs? You know, and he is, it is similar. You know, he is in the LGBT community um, and loves makeup, loves bold makeup. He does the best. Eye, I mean, you could, his eyes could be uh, uh, art. He does a really great job. I just, you know, if I had a pointer to give him, he's going to be jealous that I talked to you because um, I'm sure he? he knows you. He is 20. And where is he? Uh, we're in New Orleans. Okay. Um, so I, I'll say this. Uh, firstly, I started at a different time in the industry. Mm -hmm. So again, I had no cell phone. I had no social media. I had no uh, internet. So my way of doing it, like I said earlier, was just pounding the pavement and being audacious. Um, what I do think is that with with the advent of the internet and with all the social media platforms it's the kind of thing that a young makeup person can use to show what they do i will say however i think one of the most important things to realize is even if you do amazing fantasy work there needs to be in your social media a way to see your work where it just shows what it is without any of the filters that are put on it. Because yes. filters don't reflect real life and you don't want someone to hire you and they think what you do is really beautiful and, and finessed and to discover on the job that your finesse 
was a filter. And I'll say this that way because my one of my very first jobs, before I even went to Italy, I, I had a friend that was kind enough to toss a gig at me when I was just, a, literally, I had just come out of, the, out of the womb as far as makeup is concerned. And it was to do a singer uh, named Phoebe Snow. Oh! Who I loved. I and I was really Phoebe. excited to do her makeup. And I got to the studio and I just, I was, I was so green and I was throwing this stuff at her face and then, and the photographer read me the riot act. He was like, Mm -hmm. you know, how dare you? And you should be there and you're not perfect. And I was so hurt, but I used that hurt, that indestructible happiness we talked about before. I used that hurt. I made sure that the next time I went on a job, I was extra prepared that the, the things were finessed. And I learned that by doing it. And I think that's one of the things that I think young artists need to know is you need to really know your craft. Your craft needs to be beautiful out of the gate. You can't depend on retouching. You can't depend on filters because that will show the good from the bad. So if I have I any advice that. to him, is that. that yeah, is- I, 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 I'm sorry. Barbara, should I it's okay. I, I just, I one, just one last thing, and then I'm going to exit the stage for you. But um, I don't think that he has filters. I think he actually does a lot of this stuff live, and he shows you his process. Awesome. And he does do really well with inexpensive items as well as expensive, so people can maybe do some of their own. But um, would you be willing, without me telling him, just me putting it in your message to go take a look? And sure. his stuff? Absolutely. Okay. I'll message oh. you. I don't want to get it. You know, I don't want to get him excited or say that I'm going to connect you guys. But if it's something that you see any spark in and maybe you guys can connect off of here. Fantastic. I love Perfect. it. Thank and you so much. Thank You're you, welcome. Deanna. We also have um, we also have some questions in the quick Q&A here, which okay. I see. Uh, Cassidy says, as someone that works for a large skincare brand, I can tell you, I can't tell you how much I've been enjoying this conversation. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. So, um, Audra, did you didn't want to come to, uh, did you want to just talk from the, or we don't have to. And let me just put out there while you're doing that. I'd love to have a new skincare campaign contract. Thank you very much. Did you hear that, Cassidy? (laughs) Uh, shameless plug to know <laughs> yeah audrey you want to, you have a question um i i i'm driving and oh, i okay. wish i could talk and it keeps cutting out now that i'm up here and i can't figure out how to get myself off the stage don't worry i'll get so, you off the stage but thank you so much for this interview amazing your energy is amazing it comes through your face my grandma i was taking her walking and showing her I'm like look how amazing this man is you know oh, thank <laughs> like, you I, that's yeah yeah and your voice of course too awesome thank you <laughs> okay great thank you um audra i just removed you from the stage okay but anyway i just greg you know first of all i want to thank you for coming here today because we know each other in one way and then we, I see you, I hear you, I know what you stand for as a person, not just, you know, yeah, see, people are clapping already. And, you know, I, I really feel that when I have people on and get to know them a little bit better, I, I look at you differently now. Not that I didn't love you before, but now I really see what's going on. And I happen to love you in those glasses in that promo shot. So, um, so Adam just said he can't figure out how to get on. Oh, is Adam here? Yes. Wait a minute. Is your husband here? I don't see him down there. Is he? Oh my God! Is he on the app or is he on? Um, is he on the the browser? He. What are you on, sweetheart? The app or the browser? Sweetheart, I love it. <sighs> I don't see him in the audience, which means he's in the browser. Oh, I would have loved to see Adam on camera. The app, he said. He's on the app. Where is he in the audience? I don't know. Okay. Cassidy's saying, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram, Greg. It's at Cassidy with a Y, C-A-S-S-Y-D-Y. I'll give you Cassidy's info. Okay. Um, I am looking down on the floor and I see all these people on the bottom, but I do not see 
Adam. Adam, if you want to get on, push the two little white lines on the lower left and just ask to come up to the stage. If I saw you, I'd invite you, but I don't see you down there. Oh, well. Oh, wow. I wish we saw Adam. You you can't imagine. Adam Adam is actually on the Instagram. Uh, oh, Deanna, you're going to tell us how Adam... Yeah, is? I see Adam. I see Where? an Adam. No picture. It, he is down I in the audience. I see him audience. as well. And Where is Adam he? up. Oh, there he, he is. Yeah. Adam. Okay, good. Oh, you my see God. Him. We're All about right, invite to see. him. Invite him. I just invited him. Adam, all you got to do is click on my invitation and come to the stage. Do you see my invitation? Here, here he is. Oh, my God. Adam. Is, Hi, everybody. Listen, just, I'm, I'm going to edit out. I'm editing out that whole section. I'm just going to bring you right up. But l listen, Adam, look at you two together. Look at this, everybody. 28 years, they don't live together. Can we have applause, please? <laughs> okay. Adam, what do you... I what say, I, I'm enjoying watching the two of you talk. I'm loving uh, the conversation. It's a joy. Adam, this has been so inspirational. Do you you look at Greg's work? Just tell me, and it sometimes go, honey, that was unbelievable. Yes, and he doesn't usually show his work to people, so we'll be with people, and I'll say, oh, look, 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 and then I'll pull up his Instagram or I'll pull up his agency website, and <laughs> and I'll do it. And he's not, and he didn't put me up. To it. He's winking now, but no, no, he never brings it up. No, so what, wait a minute, Adam, what you're saying is you're not in the same place now, right? Both of you? No. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. <laughs> All right. Look, stay up there as I say goodbye, because I want to tell you something. Just to have you two there as an example of an incredible relationship. I want to thank both of you. I hate this, 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 this music. I'm bringing the weight bot up with different music because I can't stand that. Let's hope they do another one. Deborah, this has been a total joy. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Greg Brocking. You're welcome. Thank yeah, you for inviting you. me, Deborah. We love you so much. And everybody, please help me clap out Greg Brockington and his wonderful partner, Adam Weitz. And I'll see you all next week for Barsha, Barsha, Barsha.